Hello, and welcome uh, to tonight's topic of discussion. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Uh, Joshua Smith, and I'm coming to you live from the Sanctum Sanctorium. And uh, today we will be talking about uh, how the Southern Indiana area can best serve individuals of this county uh, who deal with autism. And this is of particular concern of mine. Um, this is brought to you and sponsored by my son Jared Smith. He is raising money for the Out of the Darkness Walk. And uh, while it is in uh, the title, if you would like uh, to make a donation for Jared's participation in the Out of the Darkness Walk, I've put it also in the comments. And um, we are uh, going to be talking today about a very important topic. Uh, today is the first day of Autism Awareness Month, which is really exciting. And it's also uh, the fifth anniversary uh, of the day Caitlin's Place started. I started Caitlin's Place um, because when my daughter, Caitlin, was diagnosed with autism 17 years ago, there was nowhere in southern Indiana for her to get help. It was extremely limited. And my wife and I thought we would be part of the solution and try to help meet the needs for children with autism in the southern Indiana area. Uh, and it continues to be a fight. But we're here to fight it. Uh, I've gone on to receive my uh, doctorate degree in clinical psychology and Caitlin's Place has gotten bigger with having uh, two additional psychologists and psychology students who are there to help us um, meet the needs of these special children. So, so the first thing that I want to talk about is diagnosis. And the di diagnosis of autism is something very significant. It is not something that should be done on a whim and should be so something that we take uh, everything into consideration for. There are people who are receiving diagnoses of autism who do not have autism. They are being diagnosed with autism based off questionnaires or the history that the parents provided, but not with the necessary testing that should be provided to determine if somebody has autism. Because if they are not being treated for the correct diagnosis, then they're not going to get better. First of all, when a person is being assessed for autism, there are two things that n definitely need to happen. One is they need to have a lead test done, and this is done through blood work and is a very simple test. And it can be done at any pediatrician's office. I have had the occasion where I had a patient who was diagnosed with autism but was really the victim of lead poisoning. And if uh, through treatment he was able to recover and, and talk in full sentences and make friends and is doing well. There are a lot of buildings around here that are older buildings with lead based paint and it is of necessity that a lead test be done. Another thing is uh, a hearing testing. Hear a hearing screening should be done. Now, sometimes there are children who don't speak or have lim limited speaking, and for those individuals, uh, there is nonverbal hearing testing that can be done. Both of these things should be done prior to any autism testing being done. Um, so, when we look at the autism testing, one necessary component of this is a psychological test called the ADOS, the Autism Diagnostic Observational Schedule. Now, maybe I'm tooting my own horn, but toot toot. 
Caitlin's Place is the only place in southern Indiana that has an ADOS. So if you, if, if an agency is giving out autism diagnoses without the use of an ADOS, I think that is irresponsible and I would even argue unethical because there is no way to know for sure whether or not a person has uh, autism without the implementation of an ADOS. And it, it, this gets a really tough for uh, a lot of our individuals with Indiana Medicaid because they cannot go to Louisville, Kentucky to get autism testing done. And if with Caitlin's Place being one of the few in southern Indiana, then they're left to travel to Bloomington or Indianapolis and face very long waiting lists um, to get in. For an, a diagnosis of autism to occur, there has to be developmental delay before the age of three. And I can't tell you how many times I have seen people with diagnoses of autism who've had no developmental delay. And if they don't have a delay, then it's not autism. It is something else. And it's fine if it's something else. If it's, uh, uh, I love you, Jefferson Chase. Uh, if it's lead poisoning, we can give them medicine to treat it. If it's hearing, we can treat the hearing loss. If it is, you know, ADHD, we got we can treat ADHD. It does. It doesn't have to be autism. It can be other things. And if it is autism, then we can we can work on that. When a person uh, gets a diagnosis of autism, one of the first things that needs to happen is that family needs to apply for the Indiana Medicaid waiver. And uh, if you need information on that, just uh, send me a direct message and I will send that out to you. The waiting list for the Indiana Medicaid waiver is long and you need to start that as soon as possible. I hate it when a individual is like about ready to become an adult and they haven't had the waiver done yet so uh, this waiver makes sure that the in the individual has health care and residential care what they need to treat their autism for their entire life regardless of who's the president or who's the governor or what have you so it is a necessity that this get applied for uh, when you get the information uh, you call the Medicaid waiver office they will send you an application the application is difficult if you know you can reach out to me or other people who've had to go through this and we'll help you get it filled out you get it sent in and uh, then they after you go through the waiting period which sometimes can be a full year uh, then you have a, a meeting at the Medicaid office and they review the assessment that was done they meet with the child they meet with you and then they get that set up it is vital that individuals who are diagnosed with autism receive early intervention so if you have a concern that somebody is autistic in your family, your child, whoever, have them tested. There is no downside to testing. The research shows that if you uh, get autism testing and you don't have autism, all you did is you got to have a very pleasant afternoon with a very handsome and lovely man uh, playing games. And there's no adverse reactions. Um, one of the key early interventions um, is developmental therapy and speech therapy, OT and PT. Many of these can be done in the home setting and are invaluable and can help with things like helping the child walk, helping the child talk early, helping with toilet training. And I you are going to see the most significant changes and improvement in a child when they are under the age of five so it is in the best interest that the person get diagnosed early and intervention 
happens early. I am so grateful that my children were diagnosed early so that they could get this early intervention. Uh, developmental preschools that occur in the elementary school can be very helpful. Um, and the children can go to these uh, as early as the age of three. And so even if they are young and you're like, oh, they're too young for school. No, no, no. Send them to developmental preschool. They will be around some children with special needs, but they also be around some typically developing children who volunteer to be there. And they can learn social skills and all the other life skills that will be helpful for them. The schools will be able uh, to uh, get used to them and have IEPs ready for them before they even start uh, kindergarten. Uh, so contacting your local school district once your child has been diagnosed with autism, even if they're uh, under five, they can get them set up in developmental preschools, uh, which are extremely helpful. Okay, let's talk about medication. Uh, there, the, uh, pe the perils that individuals have to go through who have autism to get the medication that will be help for them, helpful for them is really tough. For one, there is no autism specific medication. Many of the times they are given uh, ADHD medication, mood stabilizers, or antipsychotics, uh, depending on um, what their symptoms are. And uh, it takes a very skilled psychiatrist to be able to know what to prescribe the child. And I am hopeful that at some time soon um, there will be autism specific medication. It is really hard to find a psychiatrist in southern Indiana. It is especially hard to find a psychiatrist that will take Medicaid. Uh, many of my families have to travel long distances to find a psychiatrist that will take Medicaid. Even if you have private insurance, right now one of my favorite providers, the Growth Centers, is telling people that they have a six month waiting list to get in to see the psychiatrist. And that's with private insurance. The Medicaid rates uh, for psychiatry are abysmal. And so, to anybody in Indiana state government, I want to tell you something. Raise the Medicaid rates for psychiatry. There are going to be bad things that happen. People are going to get hurt. People are going to die. People are going to commit suicide because individuals with autism are not getting psychiatric care. Indiana has had a budget surplus the last five years. You have the money. Increase those Medicaid rates for individuals with, for Medicaid rates for psychiatrists so that people with mental illness, especially autism, can be seen or we're going to have dire consequences. Um, once medication is prescribed, it has to be taken daily. And if you are anyway know somebody who with autism who is prescribed medication, it is important, necessary that they take their medicine. Now, another issue. One of the few places where somebody with Indiana Medicaid uh, can see a psychiatrist is at LifeSpring. Now, currently, LifeSpring is refusing to see individuals with autism. You have to go to see a counselor there uh, to even be able to see the psychiatrist. The counselors are refusing to see individuals with autism. So they are, it is denying them of one of the few groups of psychiatrists that will see Medicaid due to the fact that the counselors will not see people with autism. So LifeSpring, you need to decide, 
are you going to let your counsel are you going to let your pay your counselors see patients with autism or are you going to revoke this asinine restriction that your uh the people who see your psychiatrist have to see your counselors there is more than enough mental health need to go around in southern in indiana believe me i know I have 44 families waiting to get into Caitlin's place. You do not have to make these silly rules. People need help and you can open up the doors to the psychiatrist at LifeSpring seeing patients with autism. And there's no reason for this not to happen. Okay. Let's talk about education. There are some amazing teachers, special education teachers. Uh, uh, you know, Miss Wendy at Utica is amazing. I love her. And uh, there are so many, many wonderful educators who help children with autism. And they've been extremely helpful to my children. But the first thing, one of the things that uh, schools will do in this area is if they have a child with autism who is having behavior problems their solution is to reduce the number of hours that this child is at school which is ridiculous if any school is engaging in that practice that needs to stop it does not make anything better it it puts an additional strain on the family uh, it makes it where the child withdraws and uh, it has never helped a child uh, some schools will go as far as to expel children with autism for having autism that's ridiculous and uh, has Dr. Josh been angry in IEP meetings arguing this issue yes yes I have we need to start thinking outside of the box when we when it comes to helping individuals with autism and their education so let's talk about one problem that we have we have regular classrooms sometimes we might even have advanced classes or honors classes and we have special needs classes uh, that is overly simplistic. There are some individuals who have who are very high functioning, level one autism, and they uh, are put in the special needs rooms, and they are not learning the things they need to learn. They need they need to have a regular curriculum, but they need to have uh, some accommodations, some teachers who understand how autism works. And maybe they can't function in a regular classroom, but they can still handle a regular curriculum. We need to have different classes at different levels and not just have the two or three levels. If you are having, if you are at a school that does not have an autism sensory room, uh, we need to fix that yesterday. There needs to be a uh, sensory room in every school of every size elementary middle high I don't care everybody needs a sensory room and you know the colleges could use one too uh, because s school can be overwhelming and there can be stimuli that uh, the that we don't even know about uh, that can negatively impact a child and they need to have in their IEP that they can leave and go to the sensory room without consequence um, there are individuals who think uh, that children will abuse that privilege from my experience that rarely happens and if so we can deal with it but abusing the privilege is a lot better than physically abusing other children which can happen when they have no place to go and we gotta be more uh, independent and creative in our IEPs uh, there is an individual I know who 
has autism and also has a heart condition and he needs to drink water but he with his autism he's fixated on not drinking water and the best that we could do is get him to drink one fourth cup of water and then a full one fourth cup of apple juice and then a full cup of water to mix them together and at first the school wasn't letting them to letting him do that and then dr josh had to ride in change that iep and it was good to go uh, but we need to be more creative in IEPs. Okay. There are, when we're talking about adults with autism, and even actually older teenagers, 16 and up, uh, many of them want to have jobs. Many of them can do great in jobs. They have a lot of advantages. They like routine. They're not want to social around. And they are committed to doing things right. UPS has a great program where they employ up to a hundred individuals with autism at the main UPS branch uh, at the U at the Louisville Airport. Hiring autistic workers can be great. Cu customers love them. I would encourage employers to think outside the box and hire individuals with autism to work for them. It we need to be pushing individuals with autism to get into the workforce because there are not many day programs around here day pro programs aren't even that great to begin with and individuals uh, experience greater self-esteem uh, productivity and uh, feel good earning their own money to buy the things they like if they work and I don't know of an individual with autism who can't do some work um, it is important that we provide respite to these families who have children with autism. There's a church uh, in Louisville that does a uh, family night out and will take care of children with autism at their church uh, once a month so that families can bring their chil or children with autism to the church and then they can go out and have some time because it is really hard to find babysitters for children with autism all right well there's a big one that I got to talk about and this has been something that uh, I've been talking about on my Facebook page for a while now as a father of two children with autism I accept that sometimes some one of my children could have a very serious problem controlling their behavior and I accept that at some point they may have to go to a psychiatric hospital N neither of my children with autism have had to go but it could happen and while I don't like this possibility I accept this possibility The closest facility that we have is uh, in southern Indiana is Wellstone. Here lately, they have been denying admission to this one young man who has had suicidal and homicidal ideation, and they've been denying him because he has autism. They have they have said as much to me. Um, one of the other places, and it's not as close, Bloomington Meadows has also said that they will not, not admit people with autism. This is absolutely ridiculous. One of the arguments that they make is that they don't treat autism. Well, you receive public funds, and this is a very public disease. This is a very common disorder. One out of 59 uh, young men, one out of 72 young women has autism. If you don't have the training, get the training. If anyone at Wellstone is listening, I will come and I will provide free training 
to you and your staff on how to treat people with autism. You have to provide stabilization services. If the person gets there and you honestly can't treat them, you can't send them home. If they say they're going to kill themselves and kill their mother, you cannot send them home. You have to find a place for them to go before they leave your doors. And something bad will happen one day and everybody will look around at each other and they will say, how did this happen? You know, they'll put me on wave three and they'll say, Dr. Josh, how did this happen? We all knew how it was going to happen. It's better to prevent the tragedy than to treat the tragedy. This needs to get better. And I will tell you this, we need another psychiatric hospital in southern Indiana. Wellstone needs a little friendly competition. There, and in their defense, there is enough need to have, in my opinion, three psychiatric facilities in southern Indiana but we let's start with another one and we need to build one in Floyd County and I'm willing to help with that in any way possible because uh, if anybody is involved in government in southern Indiana this needs to happen we need it a year ago but let's build it now this will prevent tragedies this will save lives and I am very committed in helping improve the quality of care at Wellstone for individuals with, with autism. And I'm very committed to the building of a second uh, psychiatric facility, preferably in Floyd County. Okay. Last thing. Uh, we, every now and then, when we're walking around and... Um, doing the things that we do on a daily basis we will see someone and we will be able to know just by the look of that person that they are special needs by their face by their mannerisms we will know their special needs and for the most part the individuals I come across are very friendly but some people are judgmental some people use outdoor outdated phrases um, I was told uh, at a Star Wars movie on Christmas Day uh, to control my retarded child. Uh, we need to leave our judgment at the door and whenever we see a family with a special needs child of any age we need to be friendly and helpful to that family. Tomorrow is Autism Awareness Day. April is Autism Awareness Month. Let's wear our blue but let's let's keep our blue inside of us all year long and find ways to support people that we know who have children with autism. You can volunteer to babysit their children. I believe me, they'll take you up on it. You don't have to wait to be to act. You don't have to wait to be asked. You can ask how you can help. The people that have helped my clients, the people who have helped my children are angels to me. And um I will love them for, throughout eternity. Helping my children uh, go through this journey of managing their autism, helping my clients manage their autism has been the great pleasure of my life and it has brought great joy to me and I know that it can do the same to you as well. If you have any questions feel free to message me. Uh, I will uh, get this video um, put on my uh, YouTube site by tomorrow morning. Feel free to share this with anybody that you think will find this helpful. Uh, and I hope you have a great evening. Good night.